Hello everybody, it's Wendy here from the Indigo Blue team with a, another video, a little project that I am um, want to share with you. This is a journal that we made on a secret retreat quite a while ago and I haven't really filled in very many of the pages. Um, it's rather lovely, um, used in uh, one of the stencils on a, on a fabric cover and I thought it was about time that I did a little bit more work in it. So today this is what we're going to do. I'll just quickly flick through the pages that are done so far um, so you can have a, a quick look. You can see there's not really very much being done. So I'm just going to work on this page. I'm not the kind of person that sort of flicks around and does a page here and there. I am quite methodical really and I tend to start at the beginning and work my way to the back. So what I'm going to do today is just play really. I haven't um, done this little project before. I'm just going to go with it and see where it takes me. I have got a few things out on my desk and got a little bit of an idea of, of what I want to do. Um, I've got some scraps of uh, rice paper that I've pulled out that are all in the same um, colour palette. I've also got out um, some stamping from the Floral Circle stamp set. This is a fairly recent release. When I'm stamping and cutting things out, I tend to do more than I actually need so that I've got a stash of things already cut out and usually embossed as well so that I've got things to play with. I don't have to start from scratch. So this is my little um, pile of stuff that I had from the release of this Floral Circle stamp. So I've pulled out from that a um, a stamp of the actual circle, one that I've already embossed and that I've cut out. So that's what we're going to be working with today. Um, and we'll see where we go. So the first thing we need to do is to get loads of Slap It On onto this page and get our um, rice paper on the page as well. So we'll just quickly do this. Um, nothing fancy about it. I'm putting the slap it on over the top to seal it. together. Got to slap it on the back of the rice paper so that it gives it a good level of adhesion. Oops, it also means it's a bit tricky to manipulate sometimes when the rice paper is a bit fine like this one is. There we go. I like using rice paper at the beginning of a project because it really breaks away from that white page. You don't have to worry about getting some colour down, choosing paints or anything like that. The rice paper just does it for you. So it's a quick, easy way to make a base. So we've got the last bit of the William Morris papers. Mm. Thank you. 
There we go. And leave that to dry. I'm not worried about the fact that the ends are a bit raggy. I'll just put that to one side to dry for a while and just clean up a little bit of slap it on that that's left on my paint mat here. Waste not, want not. Right, that's that done. And brush in the water so that it doesn't stick and go hard. Spray that down and just clean it off with a rag. While we're waiting for that to dry, we'll get on and paint the floral circle that we've got. So what I've done is I've looked at the colours that were on the rice paper, particularly this piece of William Morris rice paper, and pulled out some of the paints that I think will go with that quite nicely. So I've pulled out the um, Terra Verde, the translucent green the Viridian Blue, which is also translucent. I've got the um, Burnt Sienna. You'll remember these came out um, earlier this year, all in the, the same release. But I've also got the 22 Karat Gold, which is not a metallic, but it's this lovely um, orangey red colour, which I thought went really well with that. That's also translucent. And then, I don't know if I'll use this, but I've got it out anyway. It's the clotted cream, the matte clotted cream. So they're the colours that I'm planning on working with today. So let's get some paint out and let's just quickly paint this. I'm going to start with the, the green so I can do the leaves. I'll just put a little tiny bit on my paint mat and a squirt of water just to water it down a little bit and get a wet brush. So this should be fairly mindful while I'm just painting these in. I've gone quiet while I'm concentrating. <laughs> and the fact that I've embossed this image means that that embossing acts as a resist. So I don't need to worry overly about my colouring in being too precise. all the leaves. Oh no, there's one hiding there that I've missed. I always find that I've washed my brush and cleaned up my paint and then there's another little bit lurking somewhere that I should have painted. I think that's about right. I'll tie a little bit at the bottom of that flower. Okay. Right, that's the green bits done. I think I'm going to use the 22 karat gold for the flowers and hopefully that will give me a nice orangey look. We 
go. Oh, that's lovely. You see that little bit of green that's needed there, right in that corner? Little leaf poking out at the side of that flower there. Sometimes on these stamps it's a bit hard to work out which are the leaves and which are the petals. And sometimes the best way to work it out is to look at the um, the laminate and see if you're getting it right. I think that's about okay. I'm doing all my flowers the same colour, but there's no rule that says you have to. A little bit of green down here that perhaps needs... Sorting out in a minute. Oh, that's looking nice, quite vintage, which is a uh, sort of look that I'm thinking now I'm going to go for. Alright, let's see, that's a leaf here. And there. Oh, that was my tummy rumbling. Did you hear that? <laughs> Pardon me. I have had breakfast this morning. Okay, anything that I've missed? I don't think so. Right, I'll just go in with a little bit of the burnt sienna where the um, sort of twiggy bits, if you like, are. I've got quite a fine brush, so hopefully that'll be okay. to go in there. Follow it round. Alright, and while I've got that burnt sienna out, I'm going to do some of the bird. a bit of that with some of the green. like a flower there that I've missed out. How did I miss that? There we go. I think that's that bit done. Right now for the butterfly. I think for the butterfly I'm going to bring in the Viridian Blue and again with the 22 karat gold and then that'll tie in nicely with the colours on the rice paper. So here goes a bit of the orange and a bit of the blue, tiny, tiny amounts because as we know there's so much pigment in these paints we don't need very much at all. And 
and just dial it up to go into the corners. Lovely when the orange are blending a bit to make a a green, but that's absolutely fine. I might just encourage that a bit more. Okay. All right, for the bird's beak, I'm just going to bring in a, a pen, really. There's not enough. I'm just going to colour that in black. There we are. Be a bit more precise than trying to get in with a, a paintbrush. And I think that's looking good, so I want to put that to one side and just see if that will dry. So before I do that, I'm wondering whether or not to go around all these bits that are currently white because that's not part of the colour scheme with clotted cream just to help it to blend in so I think that's what I'm going to do so a bit of clotted cream on my mat not too thick but I don't want it runny so that it goes everywhere and I'm just going to give these bits a going over And this is where the um, the emboss resist really is your friend. And it just takes that harsh whiteness away. Turn it round. It's easier to turn your work round than turn your hand round. I'm keeping my wrist, if you like, on the table so that it gives it a bit of support and keeps it fairly steady. Approaching the halfway mark. It didn't take long and I think it will make the finished project look a bit more together. It's always a dilemma isn't it when you're cutting something out. Whether you try to cut on the line and risk getting loads of little white bits, edges that look a bit scrappy or whether you cut with a border and then it's what do you do with the bordered bits do you leave them as is or do you do what I'm doing today and colour them to tone them in but I definitely think this is the right decision today there we are There we are. Oh, doesn't that look better? Just a few little bits here and there. 
just need to top the paint up a bit. But I think that's looking good. I'm going to put the lid on that, paint in the brush in the water. And I think that's the painting finished. So I'm just going to pop that to one side. You can see how nicely that fits in with the rice paper. So that's done, that's done. So let's have a look back at our journal page and see how we're doing. It's still a bit wet, so I think I'm going to give this a blast with the heat gun. So while I do that, I'm just going to see if I can pause the video. Maybe not. You might just need to put up with the, the heat gun noise for a little while. Take too long. I think that's dry enough for what we need. So the next thing I'm going to do is think about what's going on top along with my painted stamped um, focal point there. When I was at um, Crafting Live a few weeks ago, Kay had some rather lovely packs of papers on the stand and I was lucky enough to be able to buy some before they sold out and one of them was this lovely pack of various different scripts um, absolutely gorgeous and perfect for a lot of the journal pages for ripping up and uh, using them as i say on your journal pages so what i've done is i've taken one of the sheets which is this one and I've used one of my nesting dies and cut out a circle because I want this circle to sort of echo the circle shape of the, the floral circle stamp. So I've got this um, and I'm thinking I want to pop that up there in the corner. I also raided my stash and found this um, sort of crocheted doily coaster, whatever you want to call it. You can often get these on markets and places like that and second-hand stores and I thought that would be rather pretty so I'm thinking that that'll go there. I want to pop my wreath up here so I might need some little foam um, attachments which I'll get out now and that's quite thin so I think it might be the little circular dots as well as some pads so I'll get those out um, oh and then I've got uh, one of these birds which I might just think I'll go out there so I need to paint him before we do anything else I told you I needed to not wipe the paint off my mat just yet because there'd be something else to paint how right I was okay let's do this in the same colours as I've done this one so that it all blends in so he's got a lovely brown a bit more brown perhaps That brown's gone mixed with the green a bit too much. Here we are. And we'll just completely echo the colours that I've got on the other one. And then the brown and the green sort of mixed together. beauty of these birds is you can basically do them any colour you like and they take on 
a totally different look. Can be like a garden bird or something a bit more tropical and exotic. All depending on what the look is that you're trying to go for. And of course, I'll do the edges of that with the clotted cream just so it looks like the other stuff that we've painted. Take a bit out of here and just round the edges. Perhaps I should have done the, the claws brown. I might go back and do that. pen for the beak and I might just use that for his feet just needs darkening up a little a little bit there we go I think that's good so I'm going to go back and do the same here just to make sure that those Claws have got that bit of darkness to them. Okay, all right, pop that to one side then. And I think we're ready to put things together. Now, I might put a little bit of Distress Ink just around the edge of this circle to give it a little bit of definition. So I've got um, peel paint, so I'm just going to just go around the edge with a finger dauber. away and that will go there with some grab and go hmm. I wonder if I left the nozzle undone I haven't stored it upside down. Making sure I get the script the right way around and pop that in that top right hand corner. The doily is coming down here and I think I might need some Slap it on for that. And I'll use a bit of super thick because it's a bit on the heavy side. Oh, let's have a look. Where is the nice super thick? Slap it on. page just to give it plenty to grab hold of and of course it dries clear so it doesn't matter that you can currently see it through the the holes in the doily there we go right so that's going to go there So I need to be putting dimensional 
Oops. Um, the dots and sponge foam pads around most of that bit. So let's do that wherever it is. So around this part, really. So wherever there's something reasonable sized for us to put something on, we'll put a foam pad. I just need to trim that down a bit. easier to cut your foam pads while they're still on the backing paper so that your scissors don't get gunked up. So we'll put that on there. too fine. I'll try it and see what happens. The worst thing that can happen is it's wrong and I have to take them off. Let's find some tweezers. Might be a bit easier to grab. going to show. So I'm going to take those off and instead I'll try and cut foam pads, little slivers. Okay, here goes. Be better. Right, I think I'll get away with that. Okay, pokey tool to take off the paper covering. You might want to go make a cup of tea while this happens because it often takes a while. Only kidding, it's not that long. She says, hopefully. There we are. Nearly done. Okay, I'll just get rid of those bits. And we'll put some super thick slap it on on the main part of the the image down here so that that grabs really well there we go move some of these things out of the way we'll see what's going on
blob back under the bird's head. Okay, and finally, the bird is going there. Good amount of slappy time. And then the very last thing is the sentiment. Um, I've already stamped from mindfulness one this sentiment here kindness matters i was looking for something that was quite small i didn't want something that was going to dominate the page and hopefully something that might fit inside the the wreath there so we'll see how that goes i've stamped it using versifying claire um, shady lane a nice green again so that it hopefully tones in a little bit with everything else that's going on there and i'm going to cut it or rip it with one of the tearing rulers so that it doesn't look too organised and it looks a bit more organic if you like. So I'll rip that down here. going to, uh, where's it going to fit? Probably just there. No, it definitely needs to go in there, but it needs painting. So again, I'm going to probably cover that in some of the clotted cream. So out it comes again. Just a bit. And again, because it's embossed, the resist is there. any of the excess dab it around a bit so a bit more patchy and let them go there so again foam pad that I might. So you make last minute decisions after you've already got your foam pads on and then you've got to be careful what you do with your fingers so you don't get the sticky everywhere. There we are. Yeah, good decision. And just in there. And I might just do a little bit of edging on the page.
works with hindsight. I might have done the edging before I stuck everything down, but that's okay. That just finishes it off. So there we are. Quick and simple journal page using floral wreath and the sentiment from Mindfulness 2. Hope you like it. If you do, give us a thumbs up on the YouTube video and see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.